The Jets won the coin toss and deferred. You've got that explosive San Diego offense. Darren Sproles stands at the goal line. Awaiting the kick, Jay Feely. Two yards deep, he's taken it out. And the little man takes it out to the 24-26 yard run back. Tomlinson takes the first handoff and picks up a quick five. Second down and five. A second tight end coming in. That's Manu Maliuna. Lined up next to Rivers. He's going to fling it. Got his completion. He's got his first down with Gates. The big target. You know, you talk about Jackson in the Rebus matchup, but what are you going to do with Gates? He has seven yards in the first down, Phil. Well, that was the big uh, question to Rex Ryan. He says, look, I think we can handle outside these wide receivers but he worried about Antonio Gates but for two reasons one he's fast enough and good enough to go down the field deep but what you just saw in that on that play big enough to go in and just get his body in the way and still able to make the catch Bart, buckle up a first down from the 35 and the pitch Tomlinson knocked down after a gain of two Going to go to the gun here with Chris Wilson coming into the lineup. Back up tight end. Vincent Jackson shifts over to the left side. He had a second straight thousand yard season and a miscue on the snap. But Rivers falls on it and Leonard downs him. An unusual sight there for the San Diego Chargers. Couldn't tell what happens. Oh, it's just too high. Hardwick just flips it up and... Sometimes early in the game, it just makes sense. Even a center, just like skilled players with a hand in the football, somebody right in front of him, worried about the blocking assignments, bad snap. Hardwick, who was out there for the first game of the season and was out 13 straight games with an ankle injury, came back right at the end of December. Scott Murchkowski had filled in admirably for him in the meantime that he went down with a knee. So Hardwick, this is only his fourth game of the year. Third long, this is the strength of the Jets' defense. Well, it would be for any defense. Now the Jets are number one in the league, third down defense. Delay of game, offense, five-yard penalty, still third down. Jerome, that, Jerome Boger, the official. Today, there's Norv Turner. He talked about how uh, crucial the week off was for this team, Phil. Well, you know, everybody else got discussed about uh, how they approach the end of the season, but he said five or six guys couldn't have played if they had to play last week. Yeah, that was interesting. So the health of his team and also last week, Jim, to stay sharp, they practiced like they had a game. So they went out and practiced hard for three days. The only difference was they rested on Sunday. Third down and 23. And he's going to throw it away. Boy, was he pressured. Jim Leonard came running after the quarterback along with brian thomas i can't design this defense or this blitz for you everybody so just look at everybody standing and what they do they make you declare who you're going to block then they read it and here comes jim Leonard. after he sees it he picks the hole to run through gets right to the quarterback so they manage one first down and then forced to punt so that decision by rex ryan didn't backfire that's for sure cypress and Contrary waves everybody out of the area. And a very generous bounce for Cyphus. Goes all the way to the 25. Jim Nance, Phil Sims in San Diego with the Chargers hosting the Jets and the winner to take on Indianapolis next week for the AFC Championship. Thomas Jones will shift back behind Sanchez who adds reinforcement on the line with Wayne Hunter on the Jets' first offensive snap. Thomas Jones, a charger on him right away, and there is a flag. He lost a yard. How about all that movement before the play? Jets trying to create confusion. Make them think. That's what you always want to do in a tight any no game. foul for an eligible receiver. Number 78 had reported as eligible. Second down. Second and 11. And they go back to Thomas Jones. He lost his footing trying to make the cut. And the ball came out. Ruled him down on the field. 
Marco Marty ready to pounce on a big play if the opportunity presents. The third down and nine. Sanchez goes short and the Chargers again playing really fast here early on defense. Danny Woodhead with the catch and a loss of a yard. Yeah, good opening series for this Chargers defense. You talked about it, Jim. They're healthy. Sean Merriman, 100%. The Jets, true to their nature, two running plays and a very safe throw. I like the first series by the Jets on offense. Don't take a chance. Let your young quarterback work his way into the game. Steve Weatherford, of course, he missed that Cincinnati game last week because of a rapid heartbeat. His punt is not a good one. Very poor punt by Weatherford. They come out with San Diego's second possession, coming off a poor punt by Steve Weatherford. Rivers retreats into shotgun. Sean Ellis, we're hearing on that Jets defensive front, hand injury and questionable to return. The Rivers has an open man. It's Vincent Jackson running away from David Harris. And then tackled by Kerry Rhodes, but they advance it all the way to the San Diego 41, game 14. So much talk about how are you going to play Vincent Jackson, and it's tough. They don't even have enough guys to Jets. They must make a mental mistake on that play. They lined up three receivers. He goes across. Who's got him? Nobody is there. So the Jets on a blitz. Didn't get to the quarterback, Phillip Rivers. Plenty of time to find Vincent Jackson. You saw Mike DeVito, who's in there for Ellis for the time being. No short on defensive line to begin with. First and ten, fake Tomlinson down the field. Another open man. It's Floyd, and Malcolm Floyd is taken down at the 22 by Lito. Shepard, another big game. This one for 19. Yeah, that's one thing. The San Diego Chargers, nice move off the line of scrimmage against bump and run and that shake makes Shepard backtrack and it allows Rivers to have a big open space to throw that end cut to but the Chargers they're not worried go ahead put your best player in Vincent Jackson they think they have four of the guys to throw the football to Rivers with two consecutive throws for big games and now the Jets 22 they go run nice little shifty move by Tomlinson picks up about four Well, opposites, that's what we have here today. Jets number one in the league, rushing the football. And talking about the Chargers, 31st. Over the Jets, 31st passing. Chargers fifth. You got the experience factor at quarterback. Sanchez, who just 54 weeks ago was quarterbacking USC to a Rose Bowl win. He was the MVP. That's the last time he played down this way. And again, this is the 71st start for Phillip Rivers. That's why we work together. Opposites of track. <laughs> that could be a good thing. It is. They don't agree on everything. From the 18, a whistle first. False start. Offense. Number 21. Five-yard penalty. Still second down. Well, there's Rex Ryan. This defense, not, not afraid to tell everybody how well they have played this year. And he goes, look, we have proven it during the season. They won a playoff game. We have the right to talk and play our style. We'll see if it works today. Second and 11. They fake the end around, and he whips it sidearm to Tomlinson. And Revis read that one out for a loss on the play. Mike DeVito came in and applied the pressure. He stood in there and was not going to be faked out by all that movement. A loss of four. Well, let's watch the San Diego offensive linemen. And when they pull, somebody goes outside, they let your guy go there. You see the center, Nick Hartwood, going out. And any time the running back goes to the same side, the Jets know. Here comes the screen. The Chargers, very good at it. They run them a lot. And the Jets spent a lot of time this week getting ready for it. Timeout, San Diego. San Diego had a third and long its first series. And boy, they came after Rivers. There's another third and long on the way for the Chargers. Third and 15 from the New York 27. Well, you'd expect them to come. They got the walk around defense. And if the Chargers have a play to take advantage of it, you think you'd see it right here. Here they come. They're picked up. Rivers. To Sproles and he almost got away. He was trying to free himself from Drew Coleman. Picked up nine, so we'll be seeing Nate Kading trial well, onto the field. 
Jim, here comes the blitz inside. Nice. Look at the wall they form. Then you look down the field and you go, oh, okay, we got to have some open receivers. Darren Sproles is the only one. The two wide receivers are both double covered. So Phillip Rivers has to take his only option, a three or four yard throw out in the flat. How about this streak? Field goals made inside the 40 by Nate Kading. And this is another one here. 36 yards. Cypress on the hold and the streak comes to an end. My goodness. Well, Kading had that streak of field goals made inside the 40. Now that comes to an end. He had also made 20 straight overall. Of course, the Jets, the beneficiaries last week of two missed field goals by Shane Graham of the Bengals. So they take over at the 26. And Sanchez with the throw that's incomplete. That was Dustin Keller. Sean Green in the lineup, and he... A rookie from Iowa plows ahead for five yards. Now, we visited with Sean Green yesterday, and you were quite impressed by the rookie. Comes off 135 yards running against the Bengals and a touchdown. Now I'm trying to figure out why he went in the third round of the draft, but that doesn't matter. When you look at the Jets and the Chargers talking about that run, grain, run game, they said Sean Green, even though he's the bigger running back, is the one that can shake defenders, get outside, and get those big runs. Danny Woodhead back in. He'll be standing to the right of Sanchez on third and five. Woodhead picks up the blitz. Sanchez given the time and the pass too high. He was uh, throwing that one at Kachery. Second three and out now for the New York offense. Well, third long, very hard for the Jets to pick up, of course, because they don't get a lot of practice on this. You can do it all you want at your complex of during the week, but you can only be a great passing team when you throw a lot during the games. Weatherford's first punt, you didn't think he went after it with a lot of leg whip, huh? He tried to kick it too easy, Jim. Even though you're trying to directional kick it, you still got to hit it hard. Much better. Yeah, this one bounces right on the sideline. First down, Chargers at the 20. That's a get to Tomlinson right at the middle for three. And Tomlinson this week, Phil, ran really hard. Just anxious to get this chance to play in the postseason. Well, Jim, we talked about it in the pregame a little bit, that when we watched him on practice on Friday, and Norv Turner even said it, he ran like it was game speed to him all week long. He's healthy. I think if you're a fan and you follow the Chargers, you can see he's been getting a little quicker, very close to make, breaking some big runs, and they expect to give him a lot of touches today. Turner said he is a focused guy, and here he is. And of course, unable to focus on anything but that big wall of jet defenders. They did not have a 100-yard runner in a single game. Only three teams in the league could say that. The Colts were another one. Third long, one more time for the San Diego Chargers. Third and eight from the 22. And that is Gates riding on out to the first down with Eric Smith carrying him with him for 10 yards. How about that? Eric Smith is just all over him. Contact is made coming from the slot. Here he comes from the top of the screen. Good coverage. There's contact before the ball is in the air. But again, Antonio Gates, so big, just runs through Eric Smith and still able to to get this catch. Darren Sproles will be the running back. And for the Chargers, they've moved the chains on every one of their possessions so far before being shut down, including a missed field goal try the last time they had it. Rivers going to throw it away out of the pocket over the head of, well, Sproles may be in the area, but Jim Leonard was running with Sproles and saw maybe a little bubble screen set up. Jensen Chargers yep. trying to get in the flow. Well, let's say this. I'm going to ask you a question. Do you think the Jets are upset that their offense hasn't gotten a first down yet? Two consecutive threes and out. They're fine right now. This they, is the pace of play they want, right? They don't care. It's the pace of play. They're patient. When you play their style, you learn to do it. They're happy with the way this game has started. No doubt. Second and ten. And for the long ball, and it's Vincent Jackson. Jackson open in the middle of the field for the second time. 
I'll tell you, Tomlinson also did a terrific job picking up David Harris. It goes for 26. Yeah, that's stuff that goes unnoticed. You're right. The blitzer's coming free. LaDainian Tomlinson watching 21. Bam, right at the line of scrimmage. And that's what happens. Most teams can't hold up up front. So you can't, you don't even get the chance to throw it down the field to these open guys. We've been talking all week. Everyone has been speculating about Revis and Jackson, but you saw it there. Revis was on Gates. They like to do that when they can. It's a zone defense behind the blitz. It's not about matching up. It's down and 10 and no game. Rex Ryan said this about Darrell Revis to us. We're going to move him around. He's going to play different guys. We're going to give him a chance to punish them all. And so they have tremendous confidence, and rightly so. He's had a tremendous year. Second down and 10 out of Aliquippa High School, same high school that produced Mike Ditka, Tony Gorsett, Ty Law. And more flags. Well, they're making him nervous. All star offense, number 62. Five yard penalty, still second down. That is now three false starts on San Diego. Well, and a couple timeouts, too. Dombrowski, right tackle, 62, watch the flints. You know why? Because he goes, here comes the blitz again. He doesn't want to get one-on-one -on -one with some little guy on the outside because you got to worry about the speed. Actually, two false starts, one delay of game, and the two timeouts. So, certainly befuddled a bit. Second down and 15. Gates again. Strickland was on the coverage. Didn't get enough for the first. Picked up 11, Phil. We've seen this play already, haven't we? I mean, we've said it. Watch Big 85. This is a wide receiver who just happens to have a big body. And again, just how do you get around him? And Phillip Rivers has thrown this pass so many times to him. Keeps it low into the outside. So he... He lets Antonio Gates use his size to catch the football. Sean Ellis, Phil, has just come back onto the field. His hand, his left hand, heavily bandaged. Third down and four, Sproles. Blanking Rivers on his left side. And that was intended for Legadu Nane, and it was Rivas who made the play, preventing the first down catch. How about that? Darrell Rivas, they're trying to work his side where they're trying to cause confusion. They're crossing each other, but Darrell Rivas stays with his guy, and that's Jimmy just outruns the football. It's a good throw. It's a good route. It's going to come back underneath. Saw this in practice. Great defensive backs. They can play the football when it's in the air, and they can outrun it too. Worth and Ford are going to punt it here. And there's a flag first. Okay, the Chargers. Kasim Osgood was late running onto the field. And now another flag. Added to the mix. Well, I think a lot of people thinking, would you, would you go for it here? And my quick answer to that is no. Your thinking was just let's see if you could pin a rookie quarterback down into a very loud end zone area. Which we know. We have multiple fouls on the play. False start. Offense, number 81. That penalty is declined. Personal foul. Unnecessary roughness. Offense, number 88, 15-yard penalty, still fourth down. So that was Osgood again getting onto the field late, and then Chris Wilson called for that personal foul penalty. Doesn't really hurt him all that much. you got a big-legged kicker here in Mike Cyphers, who has been fighting a groin injury this last few weeks. And here's where... The flag was thrown in on Wilson. Oh, there it is. That little punch at the end. Yep, right at the Jets. Wallace Wright. And a fair catch made by Cotchery at the 15. 36 yards on the Cypress boot. The Jets are making some good defensive plays, but they're also causing problems by the penalties and timeouts that's putting their defense in some of those good situations. Taping up Sproles. Final minute of the first. Jets from the 15. With Thomas Jones, the tailback, gets the handle and falls forward for four yards. Thomas Jones is going against a Ron Rivera defense. Ron Rivera, former assistant, of course, with the Bears with Thomas Jones. There's a great familiarity there. And you got to say about this defense, 
they have pieced it together. It was in shambles early in the year because of injuries. The, the guys stepping up and a little change in their style, more aggressive, more blitzing, it served them well. That's Sanchez split wide to the right, a direct snap to Sean Green. And another flag falls as Green plows ahead for another three or four yards. Well, was it a legal formation? Sanchez went in, went in motion. False start. Offense number six. The quarterback went in motion from up under the, up under the center, but did not come to a complete stop prior to the snap. Five-yard penalty. Second down. Well, once you put your hands underneath the center, then you are not allowed to go in motion unless you step away, stop, and then give. You know, that one second break before you take off and Sanchez did not do that never got set so the ball is placed at the 14 I've added some time on the clock this is a very loud portion of the stadium and Sanchez knows it last time the Chargers had a playoff game at home was a year ago, and Sanchez was in the stands, in that very end zone. Six rows from the top, second and 11. Thomas Jones with his best run before he's chopped by Eric Weddle at the 21. I don't know if anybody's been to see, but we start the second quarter. Sanchez sneaking over to the sideline, not in the huddle for the Jets. Brad Smith there, parking out the play. Been much more effective in this role in just the last few weeks. Third down for Jim Nance, Bill Sims in second quarter, scoreless. The winner to play the Colts next Sunday for the AFC title. Smith runs the option to Green, and the Chargers not fooled at all. Stephen Cooper comes up, and that's the third straight three and out for New York. Well, there's so little they can do in that formation. Look at the defense. My gosh, everybody is up there. They're not even thinking pass. And so they got the Jets outnumbered no matter what they run. They've seen this option play already from the games against the Bengals. I would be surprised if the Jets come back with that, with that thought. And Weatherford. Now the flag in action as Sproles looks to go wide now cuts back middle and takes it all the way to the 49 of the Jets 41 yard punt nine yard run back and a penalty and we've had a number of penalties already on this one yeah some of the penalty but I, I actually thought there would be the players would actually Jim be a little What's the word for it? Chippier. A little more pushing than actually we've seen because of the talk that went on during the week. Hasn't been as chippy as you thought, huh? Well, it's, uh... Can a quarterback be chippy? I mean, you seem like a chippy kind of a guy. Doing the kick. Personal foul. Hands to the face. Receiving team, number 20. 15-yard penalty added to the end of the kick. San Diego keeps the ball. First time. Penalty on Kaysen. On the outside against the gunner. Oh, right away from the snap. That's why the penalty flag. I saw it come out. Couldn't imagine what it was, but hands to the face. And Jim, I'm only chippy with you. You are consistent. And to answer your question, can a quarterback? Well, the New York Jets say that Phillip Rivers, the last time they played, was talking to the players, the defensive players, a lot. And Dar Darrell Rivas was talking about that. Said he even talked to him. Said that's not nice, what Rivas said about that whole back and forth. And Rivers, and that's something to talk about here as Hester takes it out for a first down to the 45. Picks up 14. When you're a really good pass defense, which the Jets are, you're not going to be up there playing man-to-man -man coverage all the time. And so what the, the 
Chargers know on first and second down, the Jets are going to play a little safe. When you get blocking up front, the running back sneaks out. There's no blitz. Phillip Rivers and Norb Turner both said, throw it to the backs, throw it to the short receivers, let them catch, them and catch it and run. Longest pass play of the season to Jacob Hester. Rivers has hit six different targets so far. Going again on first down. And tipped away and a flag. Going to be interference call against Lito Shepard. He was defending on Malcolm Floyd at the New York 39. I was going to say, I don't know about this call, but I'm just watching Lito Shepard. He doesn't contest it at all. Pass interference. Defense. Number 26. Foul to foul. Automatic. First down. Remember, in the pros, defenders can put their arms on the receivers. The left arm. Oh, well, there it was. The right arm. And you see that left arm there at the very end. That's not the penalty. It's the pulling of the jersey as Malcolm Floyd comes out of the cut. That's the, where the pass interference came about. Did have that left arm wrapped around the chest of Floyd. As long as you don't move him, though, that's supposed to not be a foul. From the 39, that was a 15-yard penalty. Gates reels it in with the one hand. And he's down to the 16 of the Jets. Rivers able to escape enough pressure, loft it, and Gates just jumped up and pulled it in with one hand for 23. They're attacking on the first down. This is the old shoot screen. Everybody's running right. The tight end, Antonio Gates. Hey, look at that, acts like he's blocking. And then Harris cannot recover because they think it's going to be a sprint out pass. And what a catch by Antonio Gates. Good job by Phillip Rivers throwing it soft so Gates can make the adjustment and run under it. San Diego's eighth first down of this game. Jets don't have one. At the 16, Tomlinson. He spins. David Harris stays with him as well as Marcus Douglas holds him to a three-yard gain. I think it's pretty evident to see as you watch this game too so far for the Chargers offense. It's about being aggressive in the play calling. First and second down. Most of the time, that is your three down. You don't have to deal with everybody walking around, all the blitzes, and trying to figure out what this Jets defense is going to do. So take your shots when they're playing simple. Second and seven. Rivers going to the end zone, and he's got his man. Touchdown, San Diego. Chris Wilson. Left alone in the back of the end zone. 13-yard strike from Rivers. It's a blitz by the Jets. They've got what the San Diego Chargers are trying to do. They get great coverage on Antonio Gates. They cover Vincent Jackson, but the blitz leaves one receiver again, too many for the defense to cover, and that's Chris Wilson right down the middle, uncovered. Kading on for the extra point. Wilson makes up for an earlier personal foul penalty. Now Phillip Rivers hitting a seventh different receiver in this game and it goes to Chris Wilson for a touchdown and Smith returns it from the seven and he is chased down by guess who Chris Wilson well let's talk about Chris Wilson how did he get so wide open on the touchdown it's a blitz by the Jets watch Antonio Gates Two guys on him, Vincent Jackson. Two guys on him, Chris Wilson, right down the middle. And it's a blitz by the Jets defense. Phillip Rivers under duress. I thought he was throwing it away. Let's see what it looks like to him. He knows it's there comes pressure. That's Jim Leonard diving at his feet. And again, he throws it softly to the back of the end zone. Chris Wilson runs under for the touchdown. Sean Green, the running back. Movement on the right side. 
Did you think he was throwing that ball away? Could you see the receiver when Rivers let it go? I saw him just hanging out in the back of that end zone. Oh, yeah, did. I did. I was too focused on Gates and Jackson. So. All star. Offense number 67. Five yard penalty. Still first down. Well, Phil, it's a really raucous building, this old stadium here in San Diego. When we were coming here this morning early, we we're talking about how sometimes these, yeah. what are now golden oldies, if you will, there's just something about them. The sound vibrates in here. On first and 15, it's green. Hammers after a yard, maybe two. Antonio Gray and Kevin Ellison with the quick stop. Now the Jets getting down 7 0, and that's been a lot of the talk this week about the Jets not affording, not being afforded the chance to get too far behind against a high power team trying to come back on the arm of a rookie quarterback. Of course, it's just second quarter, but the first strike of the game goes to San Diego. And the Jets have not moved the football past their own 31 so far. Second and 13, Sanchez. Throws it away. Well, that's what you want to do. I did like the play call. It gives Mark Sanchez a chance to just get out and let the field spread so he can find somebody down the field. But right now, the San Diego defense are going, we can handle this run, so they're not cheating. The Jets have taken advantage of defenses that couldn't stand into their power. Right now, San Diego's taking that power, and they're covering those receivers also. What will they ask of Sanchez on third and 13? Backed up deep. Fake draw. Over to Richardson. And three Chargers meet him at the 20. Again, three plays by the Jets and a punt on the way. Well, we haven't got a chance to talk about him yet. But the San Diego linebackers are absolutely against the run game. They are flying right at the runner being aggressive and just trying to ruin the blocking patterns of the offensive line it's worked and you saw their hits on the pass too weatherford who was the punter for the saints back in the 06 season when they made it all the way to the nfc title game beaten there by the bears and that scrolls dean spanos president and ceo of the chargers a lot of people believe that this is the time uh, this is the year for his franchise is Woody Johnson, chairman and CEO of the New York Jets. San Diego, and the 38. Step it up, hitting Floyd. Ball's out. Hit by Leonard. to be recovered by Leonard, I believe. Yeah, Leonard loses everything here. The helmet, but still has a nose for the football. But is it a catch? That is... Is it a catch? Did he have possession of that football before he went to the ground? Malcolm Floyd going across the field. Well, that's close. He definitely fumbled it wide on the air. He wasn't down by contact. Challenge flag out by San Diego. Catch it. Did he have his feet on the ground? And that's really all it takes. You don't have to. It's not a football move anymore. It's going to be a catch and a fumble. The San Diego coaching staff is challenging the rule on the field of a completed pass and a fumble. Well, in my eyes, catch, both feet on the ground, then a fumble, loses possession as he's up in the air. I thought he had to take it all the way to the ground. After reviewing the play, it is an incomplete pass. We go back and play second down and 10 at the San Diego 38-yard line. Please reset the game clock to 10 minutes, 35 seconds. San Diego is not charged for team timeout. Well, you know, first off, you don't have to take it to the ground. 
unless you're under contact. And I, I wasn't listen. that contact though. I mean, the guy came in and had his helmet knocked off on the contact. The Jim, the contact's got to be happening when he's catching the ball. He caught the ball two hand, two feet on the ground. Then it came loose, so he doesn't have to take it to the ground there. And I'm just saying, this is my interpretation of the rules. I feel pretty strongly about it. All right. Well, San Diego able to win the challenge and save its last time out. And importantly, got the football still in its possession as Tomlinson is held to no gain by David Harris. I mean, really, you know, let's go back to that play just real quick. Do you understand what I'm saying? I do, but I thought it was pretty close. I got to say this, too. How about Jim Leonard, though? His effort. He makes the tackle, loses the helmet, and just dives into the pile. Well, he did that. And recovered also, the football. But also, if it's close, then what are you telling me? It, on the field, they ruled a catch and fumble. You can't overturn it unless you're, it's completely clear. Third down and 10. Well, they pick up the blitz. Gates makes the spin move, and he's going to be stopped a yard short. David Harris and Kerry Rhodes prevented a pirouetting Antonio Gates from picking up the first about a yard shot. Well, I tell you, the, the, the impressive thing about this play is that San Diego is doing a tremendous job picking up blitzes. And Phillip Rivers, that's a couple of times we've seen they've picked out the short receiver and then Antonio Gates, very close. Why do they punt it here? Because the Jets' offense hasn't gotten a first down. They're going to play field position one more time. Well, the Jets' defense coming up big that time. That's the first time they force a three and out. Coming right after the previous time the Chargers had it. They were in rhythm and drove right down the field and scored. Another flag and no fair catch as Jericho Pottery is twisted down. Spillman, Osgood down there. But a flag all the way back at the 45 of San Diego. If it's against the Jets, it could be a first down for the Chargers. Doing the kick. Doing the kick. Holding. Receiving team, number 44. Half the distance to the goal. First down. Midway, second quarter, Jim Nance, Bill Sims. Total yards by the Jets so far, 21. 11 less than penalty yards by New York to this point. Well, they got to dig into that playbook. Just lining up and thinking you're going to overpower the San Diego Chargers. That's not going to work. You're going to have to do something that's got a little deception to it. Sean Green. That's a good burst. Wrapped up by Sean Phillips. Picks up about seven. One more look at the play that was overturned on the challenge. Yeah, it's a, of course, it's a big play in this game. The Jets need to make plays on the defensive side. And why it was not, or why it was overturned, we stated the rule. They declared that the time he lapsed after the catch and he put his feet on the ground wasn't long enough. You don't have to make a football move. There's just got to be a lapse time, so that's why it was overturned. Second and three, and Green has the Jets' first first down. He broke a tackle, got away from Jock Cesare, and goes for 11. Do you agree with that? Yeah, when he, when he states it that way, I even said it. We originally talked about the rule. He lapsed time. I thought it happened, but it was quick. But let's go to these two runs. What do they do? They're, they The first time, they fake a little reverse. They gave him a little room inside, and that time the formation made him think they were going the other way with the run, but Sean Green gets a good opening. Ryan Schottenheimer calling those plays in. That one picked up 11, longest of the day for New York. They go back to Green for a third straight play. And he's out to the 30, and Stephen Cooper on the tackle. You know, Jim and we were getting ready for this game. We were watching the Jets' offense, and of course we watched last week's game quite a bit. And at times, it looked like I was watching, you know, a wreck football game from somewhere I'd see in my town. Because everybody, the Jets, are so adamant about running. All 22 guys are really close together, like some of you see in youth football. Not the NFL football. Second and five, and Sanchez going with the short throw. Second time he finds Richardson. 
And Richardson to the 34. It's interesting, Tony Richardson has a role in the huddle for the rookie quarterback. We found that out last night with Rex Ryan when we met with him. He reminds the rookie quarterback every time, down the distance coming up. Yep, everybody has a job, but if he's not in there, then that job goes to Thomas Jones. So, but what they do with Mark Sanchez, Brian Schottenheimer calls in the play and will say to him, you have four completions in a row. Make it five. Just complete the pass. Don't think of anything else. Trying to get him to focus on just one process in the play. Third and one, and Green, the rookie, picks up another first down. He went behind Alan Fanica. Picked up two. You know, though, it's interesting you talk first about that. And Rex Ryan, Brian Schottenheimer both talked about Mark Sanchez and they said one of his things they had to correct about his makeup, he looks at the scoreboard and sees her down, and he goes, man, I want to score 14 points right now. <laughs> uh, this is not USC. The other guys are good, and you got to work your way into that. So the Jets move the chains twice. And this time, Sanchez has no chance to get away from Eric Weddle. Boy, how about that? Loses seven. First down, Eric Weddle on the outside. Just so quick and gets around the corner so fast that Richards, Richardson cannot do anything with it. Here he comes outside again. There's a free receiver down the field. Doesn't matter if the quarterback doesn't have time to throw it. A second and 17. Sanchez not sacked on the last regular season game nor last week. Green picking up a good chunk. Stays on his feet after the 36. Behind Richardson, he ran. Picks up about seven. Well, what they do, this is a good call, and they know second and long. The New York Jets, they fall for it. They're going to do one of two things. Throw a screen pass or run a draw. Because you get the defense playing pass, you get some extra yards, now you at least give your young quarterback a chance to pick up the third and long. Green has rushed for 32 yards on this drive. The third and 10. Good pass. Sanchez has the Jets to the San Diego side for the first time. It's Braylon Edwards with the catch. Oh, beautiful job by the Jets. They took their time. The offense communicated. Everybody knew who to block. And Sanchez, look at him. He's looking left all the way. He knows he has a blitz. It's single coverage. Look how long it takes. Throws it over the top. Actually, it was a zone defense. Wasn't man-to-man. -man. Picks up 21 on a third and 10. That'll give you some confidence. Back to Green. Give him a yard. Gray on the hit. Before the game, Mark Sanchez with his dad, Nick. His dad told him, just go enjoy yourself today. His dad is a chief, the fire captain at Station 6 of the Orange City, Orange County Fire Authority. And Station 6 is one of 28 urban search and rescue teams in the United States, part of FEMA. They were deployed to the Gulf Coast uh, after Katrina. And in fact, Mr. Sanchez told us earlier today, Station 6 could be deployed any day now. In the next couple of days, you might think it could turn out to be to Haiti. 34 years of firefighter. Second down and nine. Getting back on his feet, Sean Green. You know, I've just noticed, and, and not just noticed, but have you seen how many people have slipped today? Running to the sidelines, guys, cleats coming out from under them. Tapping a bunch, and we were on that field yesterday just admiring the great condition of it. But uh, it is getting a bit chopped up. Yeah, it's not that the, I don't know what it is. It just looks, it doesn't look like the turf is coming up. It just looks slick. Maybe it's too hard. And the cleats are not digging in enough. Third down and five from the 38. First time all day the Jets have threatened, done anything. Knocked down by Jammer. 
They're looking for Keller. Cameron reached in and swatted it away. Fourth and five, what will the Jets do? Yeah, it was a really good play by Quinton Jammer. Sanchez with a little pump fake. He opens up a little lane to throw it, but both corners, Quinton Jammer, Antonio Camardi, they've had solid years. It's allowed this defense to free up and cheat and play the run while they play those receivers to the outside. Weatherford back in there with 2.27 to go. Remember the Jets had four fake punts this year that worked out. Spoles, he did not fair catch it. And he's brought down at the 12. What a job last week by Jay Feely. Stepping in for Weatherford at the last second. That was a 29-yard punt, just what they'd asked for, just to try to pin him inside the 20. An 11-play drive by New York that uh, changed field position anyway. It's the first time they were able to kind of rekindle the offense. Rivers and the Chargers pinned. Back at the 12, they have one timeout. And a two-minute warning to play with. Way down the field, and Rebus had the best play on that, as it turns out. Running stride for stride with Vincent Jackson. Uh, it's just excellent coverage, and Darrell Rebus, you just think about covering these speedy, this guy fast and big, good release by Vincent Jackson. But here's what you like. Who's the first one to spot the football in the air? 24, Rebus. He sees it before Jackson does. He has a better chance to react and go get it. He says, you got to be like a mirror. Whatever the guy does, you got to mimic it. The receiver, whatever he does, you mimic it, and then just try to run with him. He asked the two best receivers he faced all year. He felt was Andre Johnson of the Texans, Steve Smith, Carolina. And he faced some good ones. Tomlinson picks up three. I mean, he shut down 1,000-yard receivers. Third down. Get to the 22 for the first. Three, two, one, one. The run, the scrolls. The Jets close in on them quickly with David Harris, and the Jets call a timeout. They have one remaining. I got to admit, pretty conservative call by the Chargers. Phillip Rivers, he's out in the field arguing because he says the Jets were offsides. He used a hard count. They jumped. But they determined nobody was in the neutral zone. Hey, it's been a divisional playoff weekend here, devoid of suspense. But uh, major appreciation for defenses. You know, the home teams have won in every case so far. And if you look at uh, what happened at Indianapolis last night, Minnesota today, the home team defenses haven't given up a touchdown now in 10 quarters. Pretty amazing. We talked about it some last week, Jim, in our playoff game that all year long, we talked about how the NFL's changed. Offense, 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 and that's some defense is really stepping up. Cypress. Wow. Boy, does he let go of a big one here. All the way back to the 23. Hatchery. Cuts a couple of times to escape hits, but swallowed up at the 32. The Saints will be hosting the Vikings. The Colts, the winner of this one. Brett Favre grew up only 50 miles from New Orleans. He was a huge Archie Manning and Saints fan as a young man. He won a Super Bowl down in the Superdome when he was quarterbacking the Packers back in the 90s. Take on Breeze next week. Here is Sanchez faking twice now. It's Keller and a negligible gain. In fact, not a gain. Out of bounds. Steve Gregory pushed him out. No catch. That's a good job by Mark Sanchez. Nobody open over the middle. Getting good protection because he's making all these little pump fakes. You're the quarterback. You look down the field. Can you spot anybody open? Maybe right in front of him for the short game. But I'm sure they told him. They're telling him as they call the play in, be careful. And second and seven. And that's pulled in for the catch by Cotchery. Stays in play, though, at a minute and 30. That was the biggest lesson learned as the season went on for Sanchez. He told us yesterday about ball security. Not necessarily the throws, but really the decisions. We talked to Brian Schottenheimer. He'll tell you it started to kind of click on mentally for the rookie come the Atlanta game in December. And there's Sanchez hitting 
Braylon Edwards slicing through the defense to the 45, and the Jets have a chance to do something before halftime. They sure do. What a throw. I see his confidence growing. That's about three times he has really stepped into it and thrown a strike. That went for 20, and he spikes it to stop the clock at 55. In all, in all these plays, when you see him getting the football down the field where he's hitting the receiver right on target, the San Diego Chargers are sending an extra guy on the the rush against Sanchez, so it makes the holes bigger down the field. It's easier for him to make those decisions. Well, how about that? Right on the target. Right on target. Young quarterback, sit everybody back, play coverage, make him make the decision, and throw it into a tight spot. Second and ten. Jets give him the time. He's going sideline and over the head. Braylon Edwards. It's Crow Marty running with him. I just don't know why the Jets spiked the football with a timeout and a time on the clock. It only gives them two downs here to get in score, a field goal territory. Yeah, they're going to regret it. They can't pick it up right here on third and ten. Sanchez from behind is hit. And it falls incomplete. That's what you're talking about. That was pressure from Steve Gregory. I was going to say, there's an uncovered receiver down the field. I lost sight of who it was as he steps up, going down the left sideline, uncovered. Yeah, it's Wallace Wright, but he went out of bounds. And so I don't know if he'd have caught the football. He went out of bounds without being forced out if he was eligible. A touchback. It's a bit of a panic play, that, that spike situation. You had 55 seconds to go ahead and reset. You know, the down so crucial, leaving yourselves only two downs to keep the possession alive. Uh, especially, Jim, when you still have a timeout. Yep. Use the timeout and then let your play calling decision making determine how many plays you're going to run from there in. Rivers will... Have one time out in the pocket here. What will he do at the 20? I know this. Seven to nothing. I think the New York Jets will be in good, a good mood and high spirits going into the locker room. And I think the Chargers will feel good about a lot of things they've done, especially picking up blitzes and making plays. They go run the scrolls for nine. Hit by Rhodes. Here's the timeout. Last one for San Diego. You know, you look at that play and you go, how come nobody was covering Chris Wilson? Well, they were paying attention with most of their defenders to Antonio Gates and Vincent Jackson, and they just don't even think about it. You're the New York Jets. You've got a pecking order. Oh, it's Vincent Jackson, Malcolm Floyd, Antonio Gates, Darren Sproles, or Damian Thomason. Where does Chris Wilson come on that? That's the problem. Way down, so nobody was paying attention to him. It's hard enough to get to the top of that list and cover him up. Again, seven different receivers in all. Picking up the Rivers so far, second and one. They get Sproles running free. They're going to have to hurry up and reset now. This is where they're going to want to spike play at 15 seconds. That was a 22-yard run. So two carries by Sproles from the 20 to the Jets 49. Uh, really good call. That's one of those, if it doesn't work, everybody boos and says, what a terrible call. But it's blocking up front. The Jets thinking pass all the way with their defensive linemen and the linebackers and defensive backs. And Darren Sproles, it's different when you send him down in the secondary than most running backs. He can make you miss. Antonio Gates seals it to the, gets the inside sealed. Sproles runs through it quick. He had Calvin Pace shielded. And again, the Chargers without any timeouts. Good. Now the Jets use their last timeout. San Diego, of course, burned off two in the first quarter when their offense was on the field. They'd love to have one of those back right now. Yeah, they would. Well, you know, usually in the first half, Tim, the rule is if you need them, use them. Second half, protect them no matter what. But good timeout by the Jets. The Chargers, they need... They get out of bounds to even get a chance to kick a field goal. So you go over your rules. Tating's career long, 57. Yeah, I'd say 
Oh, they get 10. It's we were watching him in, in warm-ups. Made one from 62. 62. Yep. Of course, these are not practice footballs. You know, I always say that warm-ups, those footballs always travel farther because they've been kicking them all week in practice. It's not a brand new game ball. There's Vincent Jackson. He's got 11 yards. Man, is that clever. That really was. I, I, I thought they had everybody covered, Jim, where they couldn't get out of bounds. He's going to set up about 57, 58 yards. And they stuck him across the field. Vincent Jackson, top of your screen. Well, the defender's down below. They're trying to make sure Antonio Gates can't catch it and get out of bounds. This is going to be 57 with match a career long for Kading. Importantly, it would give the Chargers a 10-0 lead at halftime. Oh, big three points. Of course, we know that. Got a hook. It's knocked down and running it out as Rivas trying to pull off something Cromartie did once against Minnesota over 100 yards. And Rivas is tackled by Chris Wilson. A 50-yard return. Well, it's smart by the Jets' part. It just doesn't look like Kading just catches all of it. Falling away, not in good position to drive it. That's why it's short and right. And Rivas, very alert. Really nothing could go wrong here except if you fumble and they return it for a touchdown. He was last wave of defense, got him. I thought Mark Sanchez got pretty comfortable there at the end of the first half. Smith, who returned that second half kickoff at Indianapolis for a touchdown. A couple of weeks back, bouncing off a hit. He's out across the 30, and he steps out of bounds after a very strong return at the 40. Yeah, those are bad numbers for an offense, but the good number is they didn't turn it over, and their defense kept them in the game. Thomas Jones returns as the tailback on the first snap, second half at the... 40, and it's Jones running off the right side for a quick scamper of eight. Tony Richardson helped clear him. Well, I like that draw play. The Jets, those quick fakes outside. When he makes that quick throw in motion to the outside, Mark Sanchez, what it does, it makes defensive linemen stand up. Where's the football? And once they stand up, boom, Thomas Jones threw the hole quick. Second and a short two. And go up middle and move the pile to the 48 of San Diego. They'll also advance the chains down after a first down. Talking to Rex Ryan yesterday, he talked about how the atmosphere in his mind reminded him so much of week one when the Jets traveled down to Houston. Yep, nobody gave him a chance. High flying offense, everybody's trendy pick. We're hoping to show a lot of people what we're really made of in this game against San Diego. That's what he told us. Didn't have anybody thinking much of him going into the game against the Texans. Sanchez, now he lets go of it all the way to the goal line. Double coverage on Braylon Edwards. Quentin Jammer was back. So was Antonio Cromartie. And the one thing I'll never forget yesterday when we are Friday, when you talk to the Chargers, Ron Rivera, he warned his team when they crossed the field and they got some flow to their offense, look out, they're going to try to score. They take their big shots. And there it was, midfield, first down, trying to get the touchdown on one big play. Boy, did he have that one scouted out, huh? Rivera, a candidate for the Buffalo Bills job. Great coach. Second down and 10. Thomas Jones to the 45. That's a Buffalo job, by the way, to Brian Schottenheimer. Jets offensive coordinator. He turned down a chance to interview for that job just yeah. this week. Yeah, he did. And, uh, you know, I look at both of them definitely qualified to be head coaches, no doubt about it. But as I see that second and 10, and, you know, you when we listen to some of the things that coaches tell their players, you understand why they react so well to certain plays. They got scouting reports. They let them know they can narrow it down to two choices. Then they, once they know it, then you can attack. It's third and seven. 
And that's incomplete. Contrary, though, draws the flag. Boy, a lot of traffic around that one. Pass interference. Defense, number 23. Spot the foul. Automatic first down. Oh, a good start here for the Jets then with the penalty. They'll keep moving here to begin the third quarter. It is top of your screen. Quinn and Jam are really physical. Hmm. Grabs him after the play. Makes the contact there. That's not a foul. Well, he pulls him and keeps pulling him. That's what you see. But the Chargers in good position to defense that play, no doubt about it. Jets now at the San Diego 37. And Thomas Jones. A lot of bodies around that one. Picks up three. That's what they want. That looked like the, some of those rugby scrums we saw last week. They just want to get the pile moving, and everybody falls forward, and it gets them four and five yards. Just watch this Jet offensive lineman this time. Do they get the defenders going back? It's Damian Woody. Good job outside. Hardstock, good block. Got him turned. Linebacker block. Boy, nice job by the Brickishaw Ferguson from the backside getting the linebacker. A second down, seven. And Jones backing his way in for two. Third and five on the way. Sean Green started to warm up. He said at the beginning of the game, one of my points, they fear getting trampled by the run. And the other thing is, they said the Jets, not like most teams we play, they won't give up on it. Third and five. What a stick. That was Jammer preventing Keller from picking up the first. It's going to be a little less than a yard to go. Well, they're actually going to spot it one full yard away. Fourth and one coming up. Well, it'll be interesting. As you see that football where it is, did he get closer than that? to the first down marker, the throw of the outside. Where does Keller end up? Oh, uh, it's pretty close. If you challenge it, you might not get the first down, but they might move the football. Then you could go for it on fourth down. See no signs of a challenge on the way from the Jets, but they are going for it. Fourth and a yard to go. I agree with going for it. Ryan's trying to call the timeout. And now it's granted. I would have just challenged instead of calling the timeout. Rex Ryan calls an audible. He's going field goal. 46-yard try on the way. Jay Feely. And fourth and one. Jets put points on the board. The decision there to bypass going for it on fourth and a yard going field goal. Go ahead, Phil. Scrolls. Oh, a good decision there. Where to kick it to keep the big return away. Jim, here's just my point. I got quick opinions up here, of course, as you can listen to. But this, instead of calling timeout, if somebody would have alerted Rex Ryan, hey, throw the challenge out. You get the timeout. You get time to think about your decision, what you're going to do. Now, you tell me, where would you mark this football if you could replay it? Well, I think the spot happens outside the 28, it would have been on inside the 28 if they remarked it. Then I think they would have said, wow, it's one foot. Let's go for it on fourth down. But since they didn't, I agree. Go ahead and kick the field goal. Really good from 46, and now the Chargers. Leading 7-3 with Rivers. Hit down low when he tried to throw it to Tomlinson. And you know, you, I have to admit that the, this Jay Feely, boy, Rex Ryan, Talking about him, he just couldn't say enough about him. And he wasn't talking about his kicker, just his attitude. How about what did he say last week when uh, they said, you got to punt in the game? Didn't flinch. Oh, okay, I can do it. And Rex Ryan says, I look out in the field, and I go, wow, he's short. I hope we don't snap it over his head. <laughs> That's right. So. He punted seven times in that game and had three inside the 20. One of his punts inside the 10 really led to a field position change that led to a touchdown. And the Jets got it back. That's gain of two for Tomlinson. That's it. It's just it's the Jets. You got to give them. You got to give them a lot of credit. And they're hanging in there on the defensive side, and they keep getting the Chargers in these type of situations. Third and eight, third and ten, and they've had a couple of really third and longs. And some some offenses have told us when they play the Jets if it's third and long, I just punt. 
Phillip Rivers told us he watched a cut up of every third down situation of the Jets defense this year. This week he watched that whole tape. Every cut up, cut up of every third down play they faced. Looking for the tendencies here on third down. And the catch incomplete, I believe. It hit the ground. That was Malcolm Floyd. Donald Strickland defending. Well, I'll tell you, that's what's different about this football team. Inside, going down the field. It's man coverage. Phillip Rivers, can you cover it any better than that? He throws it back shoulder. And when Malcolm Floyd goes up to get it, look at Strickland. Hand his hand went right between Floyd's causes the incompletion. Bounced off the ground. Incomplete. San Diego's third, three and out on the year. That's a weapon. Hatchery. John Green starts this series in the backfield for New York. And the rookie from Iowa. Takes it outside. Connects with Quentin Jammer. Gain of three. I think that's what catches everybody off guard. When you look back in the backfield and you see Sean Green, you go, oh, okay, here comes an inside run. Then he just casually takes it outside, and you go, he's fast, too, because he is so big. And you even said it yesterday. We had a chance to talk to him. He walked out of the room, and you said, man, he's, he's quick. He's impressive. Rex Ryan said he's a lot faster than people give him credit for. When they were scouting him, he reminded them of Michael Turner. Falcons running back. Second down and seven. Back to Green. And there's that deceiving speed. Picks up a first down. Gallup's out there for about eight. Well, that's uh, this is what the Jet running backs do well. They get the defensive lineman moving to their right, the Jets left, and as soon as they see a space, those runners cut back, and those linebackers, that's who's got to be there to make the plays. But look, Mangold up on Siler doesn't let him get off. That's why Green gets the first down. The first down at the 30. The fake and the throw on first down. That's Keller. A gain of about 14. Right. Over the secondary by Eric Weddle. Well designed, Jim. And you run it just a little. He's going to go out here. The good play fake. That little open spot in the defense the corners up on the wide receivers the next person can get there to knock this pass down is the safety and he's too far away boy good play action fakes mark sanchez handles the ball very well big hands allows him to really sell out when they fake the run now it's weddle being stretched out first down in the round and that's country getting away from the first hit Sean Phillips had a chance to drop him for about a six, seven yard loss. Sean Phillips said, Jim, it's, I wanted to say earlier, they keep faking this reverse. I've never seen a charger look at the reverse runner. And then they hand it off and there it is. So they were, they were watching it. I just couldn't tell. Spillman, rookie for Marshall, rookie free agent, undrafted, in for Weddle. And picked up a yard. Contrary has been held without a catch. Could have lost six or seven. Foul star, offense, number 67. Five yard penalty, still second down. Well, it's Damian Woody, top of your screen. Oh, just dead flinch. Isn't that terrible that that counts as five-yard penalty? But that's the way it goes. It's... Now the Jets, these situations, so far today, they've been a heavy run team, but Mark Sanchez is now involved in the game. Well, they let him throw it. On second and 14, with pressure, gets it away, and it is intercepted on the rebound by Jammer. And Jammer to the 38 of the Jets. It was tipped by Steve Gregory. Yeah, it's the tip, but that's not what causes this interception. It's not a good decision by Sanchez, but watching. Here comes a blitzer from the outside, untouched. He knows it. He tries to hang in there, 
and make the throw. That's Paul Oliver on the blitz, untouched. And when you try to hang in there, you throw before you see it cleanly. And that's Stephen Gregory that misses it. What a rebound catch. We're going for Edwards. Right off the fingertips of Gregory. Jemmer never flinched, and he runs it back 24 yards. First pick thrown by Sanchez in his last 69 passes. Sets up San Diego on the jet side of the field. They're going to try to take advantage of it right here. Nope. Rivers goes with the short option instead. And that's Vincent Jackson. Flags everywhere. Bouncing out of bounds at the 15. Vincent Jackson with the reception. Malcolm Floyd may be flagged for an illegal block. Negating a 23-yard pass play. During the return, during the run, illegal block in the back. Offense, number 80. Ten-yard penalty, replay, first down. Well, the penalty's on Malcolm Floyd. What a job of Phillip Rivers. Look at everybody around him, that short motion. Serves him well, and there's the block by Malcolm Floyd at the last second. Easy to see, definitely in the back. And that was a, that was a, that block did not help Vincent Jackson get free. He hit Jim Leonard in the back, and mark it off from the point of the infraction, so it's a first and 12. Rivers given time, gain of about a yard to LT. Well, maybe a couple more than that. Rex Ryan has said this whole head coaching thing, A.J. Smith, general manager of the Chargers, he put me on the map. He interviewed for this head coaching job at San Diego, the one that Nord got. Second down, back to Tomlinson for maybe a yard. These Jets, the screens, everybody has a hard time defensing them when you play the Chargers, but follow the offensive linemen. Soon as they release, oh, good job by Brian Thomas getting off the block, but the linebackers seeing it, they follow it, nowhere to run. But what were you, 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 it's true, Rex Ryan, he just said that was, he, he came out here and interviewed Jim, what he said was, Man, I got a chance to get this job. <laughs> yeah, he didn't think he did go in. This is really exciting. Man. Traveling out here, he said, suddenly I realized I might get it. Well, he got it instead. And he goes, and man, they're good. Third down, third and eight. Mark Scott was coming after him, and the pass incomplete as Rebus denied it and takes off running with it. Well, they're calling it a catch and a fumble. That's it's got to be incomplete. Well, it's got to go back to your rule, Jim, that, it, that you said the first time. There was contact. They're going to the ground. <laughs> Rex Ryan doesn't think so. He says it's going the other way. Yeah, but that vest doesn't have stripes. The ruling on the field is that the pass is intercepted. The ball was loose and never hit the ground. How about that? First down. Did Rivas make another phenomenal wow. athletic play? Rivas has an interception for the second straight week. Bouncing off the heel of a falling Vincent Jackson. What a play by Rivas to deny. Anyway, first and 10, Thomas Jones. Picks up about four. Well, the hype about Darrell Rivas, it's definitely not overhyped, that's for sure. Breaks up the pass. It hits Vincent Jackson's, the back of his shoe, and even if you challenge, you would lose the challenge. And he's not down either, Rebus. So he gets up and gets a few extra yards. But if that's not Darrell Rebus there, I think Vincent Jackson is going to go up, out jump, and get the football. Tremendous play by him to get the interception. The second down and six. And coming into the backfield. Quickly is Kevin Burnett. Sets him back four yards. Well, one way this Charger defense, what they do, here comes the blitz along the side. If they think it's a running situation, they're not afraid to send everybody to the outside, run it down, put guys up the middle, and put the pressures on the corners if it is a pass. Good call by the defensive side, and a good play by Burnett. Third down, 10. And 
left alone. Patry has a catch. And he's bumped out by Jammer. And the Jets convert on third and 10. They go for 15. Now, you know, they can do this more if they want. If they want to let Sanchez drop back, look at the top of your screen. You can see everybody else is inside. And that's the way the Chargers play. They play conservative. And they say, okay, if you want to throw it outside to the sidelines, we'll give you that throws. Can you get it done? That time Sanchez did. Nice throw. Very relaxed. Made it happen. Jericho Patry, who caught 21 touchdowns at North Carolina State. 21 touchdowns thrown to him by Phillip Rivers on first and 10. Now Jones and Sean Payton, the two will score off on the NFC side. Both former players for the Panthers out of Charleston, Illinois. Both played quarterback there, as did Mike Shanahan. The new Redskins coach, second and seven. Run it straight ahead, helmet lost by Thomas Jones with five gain. Well, they're wearing that play out. It's probably one of the better runs the Jets have, that little fake throw to the outside and the draw up the middle. Thomas Jones, who was in that Super Bowl three years ago, the last time it was contested at Dolphin Stadium. Ran for over 100 yards for the Bears and what turned out to be an Indianapolis victory. Third and short coming up for New York with a minute to go in the third. Patrick turned around too late. Sean Phillips, though, maybe forced to hurry. Yeah, they guess wrong. That's what they do. They'd had so much success with all these fake actions one way and the quarterback rolling out the other against the Bengals. It's the Chargers. They're waiting on it. Sean Phillips, nice job being disciplined, staying there and letting it come to him. Makes uh, incomplete. Now they got a punt. Weatherford into punt. The seventh time. Scrolls the returner and run away from it. Norv Turner said this week to his team, we don't have anything to protect. We have to make it happen. Well, it's a 7-3 lead. Yeah, it's uh, getting late here. 51 seconds to go in the third. Back up at the four-yard line. Tomlinson again. Second down and nine. Who would you have voted for? Well, you know, I learned from Mike Tomlin. Celebrate the winners. Don't complain about who doesn't win. Rivers throw is intercepted by Leonard. And the Jets are set up in the red zone. When you play pressure defense, what you do is you just wait for that mistake to happen. And the Jets have been patient all day. And it's a blitz. It's good pickup. But Phillip Rivers, I think he's throwing it a seam pass to Antonio Gates, who's not even looking. Or did he overthrow Vincent Jackson on the end cut? But he definitely lost his rhythm and his timing. Look at Gates. He's not looking. There comes the throw. Boy, right to Jim Leonard. Rivers picked off on his last two passes. The first one, of course, the great play by Rivas. This one right under the arms of Leonard. And the Jets are as deep as they've been today. They're at the 16 of San Diego. One more snap in the third. And it goes to Sean Green for a couple. We're headed to the fourth. Maybe we're not. We've got a flag. You know, Jim, I'm going to go back to that interception real quick. Norv Turner says no disaster plays. Phillip Rivers just lost his rhythm and his train, whatever you want to say, he panicked, just got too quick, and he threw it before he saw what was really going on down the field. Phillip Rivers, who's never had a three-pick game in his career, has now thrown two in the quarter. Two on his last two throws. After the play was over, personal foul. Unnecessary roughness, defense number 95 with a late headbutt. Half the distance of the goal, the penalty will be enforced at the beginning of the fourth quarter. Jim, let's go back. Here it is, Sean Phillips 
The play is over. Oh, the headbutt. That's 15 yards. It's a dead ball foul. And that is, uh, that's a big play. When you're playing this Jets offense, your defense has played so well. Now you only got seven yards. The Jets looking at seven yards and three downs. Starting the fourth quarter, along with Phil Sims, Jim Nance, seven-yard line. First and goal for New York. And that was Sean Green. And he falls for a gain of about two. And one more look at the Leonard pick. Well, here's Antonio Gates. Here comes Vincent Jackson. We said we couldn't tell who he was throwing it to. And I threw these passes many times in my career. And I call them dropping passes. And what do I mean by that? You throw it, you know it's a bad decision, and you're just begging the defender, please drop it. Second and goal from the sixth. That's Green. And he's about two yards away. Well, we mentioned a year ago, Mark Sanchez, just two days after winning the MVP of the Rose Bowl, he came here to watch Rivers and Peyton Manning in the playoffs. He wanted to watch those two quarterbacks. Today he's going against Rivers, trying to win the game to go against Peyton next week. He was right up there at the very top, six rows from the top in this end zone, just to the right of that scoreboard. Watching, watching, observing, and trying to learn from those quarterbacks how they handle it. How will he do it here? on third and goal from the two. Jets trying to go in front of this divisional playoff game. Sanchez is gonna throw it, rolling out, looking, 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 now throws, and he's got the touchdown to Dustin Keller, and the Jets take the lead. That's all about Mark Sanchez, good protection, lots of time to throw, Look at the defense initially. Everybody covered, but he doesn't panic, and something he can do. He can throw on the run, and he can be accurate. I'll tell you else, too. He is a first-class celebrator. Shows his emotion, and that, that, is, that is exciting. For a touchdown in that situation, you deserve to jump up and down. Feely makes it 10-7. It's just a four-play drive. Let's go back to Weatherford punt that set up San Diego at the four, which led them to the interception by Jim Leonard. And then Sanchez, aided by a penalty, finds cover for the touchdown. Oh, they're ready for the short kickoff this time. So Marty has it. He's not going for the ball's out. Ihebo knocked it out of his hands, just stripped it away from Comarty. Looks like San Diego fell on it. Look at North Turner right on top of the pile off the sideline. <laughs> Short kick to Cromarty. Darren Sproles is going to end up recovering it. Oh, what a tackle. Grabs, look at him grabbing the football. He had a bow. He just makes plays every single game. Darren Sproles again with the recovery. And the Chargers at the 29-yard line. Boy, this is starting to feel like, and they got to be careful what happened several years back when New England came in here. After the Chargers had a 14-2 year, and they got knocked out in this very spot. As Tomlinson goes for two yards, and the crowd is booing. 15 yards in the third quarter, and a couple of turnovers by the Chargers. Second and nine, and Rivers... As Tolbert, but what a stick by Brian Thomas. Holds him to a six-yard game. It's a blitz. Here they come again. Phillip Rivers under pressure, really by his own guy. And from the backside, Thomas makes, boy, he just hits him dead on. And Tolbert is the one down on the field. After making the catch, and that collision with Brian Thomas. Injury timeout. 12.41 to go in this one. And Tolbert is able to walk off. Look at Big hit delivered by Brian Thomas. Third down and three. 
They have not had a lot of third and shorts today, San Diego. Only the second time they've had third and less than five yards. Rivers finds Gates. And they've got the first. Good for nine. Well, what they do, uh, surprised we haven't seen more of it. Why we have it, Jim, second time all day they've had third down and less than five yards, but they put three receivers together. And when you blitz and you're trying to pick out who are you going to cover, hard to do that when three guys are running up the field at the same time. Another good job, Philip Rivers getting rid of the football. Not that they're picking up all the blitzers, but they're not getting three lanes to run right in there and get the Rivers faster. And go to the shotgun on first down. And they'll go empty as they send LT to the right. Rivers in trouble, and he's wrapped up at the 41. That's Mike DeVito with the sack. Did not have a sack all regular season, and that's loss of five. You, you know, when you talk about this, we talk about the matchups. This defensive line of the New York Jets, they only got five guys going today. And they've done a tremendous job in the run that time in the pass. Now you be the quarterback. Where are you going to throw it? There's no one-on-one -on -one coverages. There's nobody open, really. Phillip Rivers looking down the field, nowhere to go. The Jets' first sack. Looks at a second and 15. They were showing blitz. Now they back up. Well, that was a good fake. Caught by Sproles. Tough catch. But good for only two as David Harris stayed right with him. Another third and long on the way for San Diego. Seen that quite a few times too, Jim, as a Phillip Rivers finds the open guy, the short receivers, the running backs, the tight ends. But the Jets closing fast, making tackles, and not giving up very few extra yards after the catch today for this Chargers offense. Now we got a little stand-up defense once again. And third and 13, Rhodes strips him. Rivers tries to fall on it. He had support. Kerry Rhodes came in untouched, and that's Manu Maliuna with the recovery, keeping it for San Diego in the punt. How about that? It's, it's blitzing. It's all about when you decide to send them and how late, and they wait till the last second, and Rhodes from the outside before Manu Maliuna can see it, it's too late. And this is not like a defensive lineman or a linebacker. These defensive backs give them a little space. They can close the deal very fast. Cypress, maybe his best of the day. He's had some good ones. All the way back to the eight. That's Kotchery gets past the wave. And Kotchery still running out to the 35. San Diego total offense in the second half, 19 yards. Rivers and Gates trying to figure it out for the next time they step on the field. On first down, it's Sean Green. Hit first by Brandon Seiler from behind. Gains four. Well, Jim, let's look. Kerry Rhodes comes from the outside. Remember, he got benched early in the year because when you play defense for the Jets, your safeties, you got to make plays. But long yardage situations, look down the field. Nobody's open. There's really nowhere for Phillip Rivers to throw it. The Jets able to blitz and still drop back and cover the receivers down the field. Second down and six. Back to Green. Even Cooper gets a hand on him quickly. And it's a gain of two. Third and four. Next for New York. Stephen Cooper, good name, just very tough against the run. And Brian Schottenheimer, he remembers, he was a coach, the offensive coordinator for the Jets, was a quarterback coach out here in San Diego, and he has a lot of respect for the linebackers, how good and how aggressive they are coming up and stopping the run. We need to make a stop right here, moving in on eight minutes.
on third and four from the gun. Jets pick up the first down. It's Kotchery. Wow. How tight of a throw was that? Cromarty leaves his guy, comes off, and is going to go for the interception. Top of the screen. Got to be careful. He's looking in. Sanchez must see him, and he throws it behind Kotchery. If he leads in at all, throws it at him, it could be an interception. Perfect throw. Tremendous placement by Mark Sanchez. Reminds you a lot of what you saw yesterday or last night from Peyton Manning against the Ravens defense. Midway fourth, new set of downs. 47. Sean Green plowing ahead and taking off. Green to the 20. He's not going to be caught. Touchdown, New York Jets. Broke away from Eric Weddle and explodes for 53 yards and a touchdown. Sean Green's become such a part of this Jets offense late in the year. And hasn't been worn down by too many carries. You said it, Jim. It's just he explodes. And here's what catches you by surprise. When he's in the open field, they can't catch him. Yeah, there's a whole lot more speed there than you ever thought. It's a good combination in this league, speed, side, and size, and power. Second touchdown of the final quarter. Sean Green has just given the Jets the longest Jet run in their playoff history. 53 yards for a touchdown. Well, you think back, we talked to him yesterday, and the Jets, they knew they had something in him in the training camp. They worked him, and he was kind of laughing. They, they, they roughed him up and ran him over quite a bit, trying to learn how to be a, a running back who can pick up linebackers when they blitz. But, man, when they call him in late, called on him late in the year, he's done terrific. Healy gets it on the ground. Manu Maliuna comes down the sideline. He had him bow. Chops him out. Now, that did not work out well for the Jets at all. I know one thing. I wouldn't be happy with that kickoff by the Jets. No. A short field, little too conservative. Conservative. I know Darren Sproles. He's tremendous. Quick slant, and they're already over to the Jets' side. That's Malcolm Floyd. The three finals before this one, all going to the home team by a margin of 26 points per game. The three finals over the divisional weekend but the road team right now in front here with inside seven minutes to play Jim that was a good throw and catch Jets had somebody coming free once again right at Phillip Rivers that was Kerry Rhodes again on a second and two oh Gates wide open he had gotten away separation from Eric Smith and he had an open field probably had another 10 yards to go well, they're guessing right. They pick up the blitz. He's going to fake like he's going in, in inside. How about that? For the big guy, just one of the reasons why he's so good. Definitely takes his head off the football. You know, you, you can't overstate. Maybe he takes his head off the football because he thinks, wow, this Jets defense, somebody's going to be there to hit me. He's trying to find that guy maybe too quick. So now it's a third and two. Get the first down. Gates holds on to it this time. Makes a nice little wiggle and takes it to the 30. He said, give me the ball back. And he posts him up again. Yeah, it's just what he did. He's posting him up, going inside. It's This is almost an impossible task for Eric Smith. you got to cover him one-on-one -on -one over the whole field. And you, we saw it. it was the same play, basically. He went across, stopped, came back out. All you need is a little window. First down at the 30. At Jackson. The six. Mid Harris closes in on him. Gain of about five. San Diego still has all three of its timeouts. They're already in field goal range at two scores down. No huddle, but taking a long time to get everybody set. That was about a 32nd plus five yard gain. Now as Rivers gets the protection, but no one open. 
Third and five next. Third and five until you said it a minute ago. They don't complete it here for the first. You've still down two scores. You've got to think it's a call to Katie. It'll be about a 43-yarder from this point. And Jim, if it breaks down quick, you've got to throw it away here. Just beats the play clock. Floyd has it, but he's short of the first. That was just, I'll tell you, the Jets, they've got the rhythm of his cadence. I, I don't know what, but when that football is being snapped, they're running full speed up inside. And look at the free runners once again. Not one, but two. So another good job by Rivers just getting rid of it. But it makes him try the field goal attempt. Now this field goal, a must. It's from 40. That's the yardage he missed against the Jets in the playoff overtime game back in 2004. Well, and this now to get him within seven. Kading. This is it. And he is wide right. His third miss of the day. His first three miss game of his career. Yeah, that, that was everything. It, it was almost the game I was saying as he's getting ready to kick it because now you need two possessions to get this done. And it's just not a confident stroke or motion. I mean, I've never kicked in my life, but you can just tell he's leaning back, so that makes you think when they lean back a little too much, it has to go a little right. The Jets, they know how big it is. How about Rex Ryan and the Jets, the way it's worked out for them, the two misses last week? At Cincinnati by Graham, the three today by Kading, two of the best in the league, unable to connect. And now with 4.38 to go, Jets have the football back. Green. And Weddle this time is going to make sure he wasn't going to advance it any more than two yards. I would have called timeout if I was the Chargers. If you call timeout, I believe you will force the Jets to run it three times. Because they'll say, okay, let's just make them use those timeouts. Second and eight. That's Cooper with a quick throwdown and another three yards added to the total for Sean Green in the third and five. And there's your timeout by San Diego, the first one they've used. He had made 20 consecutive field goals before this game today, including that streak from 40 and in, 69 straight. One of his misses today was from 57 right before the half. A 36 and 40. He had missed three all season long in 35 attempts. Now, are the Chargers going to get a chance to get the full football back to have any chance at all? They're going to run it. Third and five. Green stopped by the Chargers. And another timeout utilized at the 344 mark. San Diego left with one. Well, they have one timeout, the two-minute warning. And Aaron Sproles waiting for the punt. To be the third, and they almost got to him. It's a short kick. Caught by Cromartie on the hop, and he's down at the 37. Oh, they had it. That was Hester who had him, Phil. He had it. He just missed it. It could have been a knockdown, go in and score. Hester, who has had some plays this year on special teams. Oh, the Jets, they let the inside guy come free. Brad Smith, Jacob Hester. Hester, who had a punt block for a touchdown return. Oh, he definitely tipped the football. There's no doubt about that, Jim. Remember, we were at Pittsburgh early in the season. He had a strip touchdown return in that game, too, on special teams. Rutherford got it away, though, and the Chargers now take over at the 37th. about the 48. That's Gates. The Strickland trying to guard him. It's just amazing. The Jets can blitz and still not, you don't even have a hope of getting the football down the field for the big plays. We saw the San Diego Chargers a number of times this year and you just admired how they could go down the field as good as you've ever seen it. We haven't seen it today. 
The opportunity's not been there. False start. Offense, number 68. Five-yard penalty. Still first down. Rumor was all over at halftime. He kept saying, man, I like where the Jets are. Yeah, he had it. First and 15. And Rivers now going down the field. That's Jackson. Did he get the feet down? They give him the catch at the 20. That is some catch by Benson Jackson. It looked like the Jets. No, no, I thought the safety was going to get over. Did he get both feet down? Was his wow. right foot on the ground? Rex Ryan has already challenged the play. Yep. You could tell one foot was down, but the other one, it's gonna, we're going to have to look at this one closely. Pretty acrobatic move, though, by Jackson. We had Dwight Lowry in on the coverage. I thought the safety, I think it was Jim Leonard, was going to get over there and actually make the play. I think he's got it. Yep, I do, too. There's a penalty flag on the field, too. You know, uh, Vincent Jackson went over and kicked the challenge flag. Wow. It, you know, Jim, it gives me a chance. Penalties are a big part of this game today. The New York Jets coaching staff is challenging the rule on the field of a completed catch. Additionally, after the play was over, unsportsmanlike conduct, offense number 87 for kicking the, the challenge pass. There is no 87. 15-yard penalty. And that, that's Vincent Jackson, 83. Well, Vincent Jackson, I believe he gets both of his feet down. The left foot's inbounds, and the right foot, a couple good angles. That's one you can tell it just drags. But I think the big play, Jim, is the 15-yard penalty once he kicks the challenge flag. Well, but it makes a great play with the right foot here, the but play. then there it makes it a is. good the play. Is confirmed is completed catch. Yeah. We'll now enforce the 15-yard penalty for the unsportsmanlike conduct. After conclusion, it'll be first down and 10 at the 35-yard line. New York Jets are charged a team timeout. Well, we've they talked about, the, oh, go ahead. Well, they lose the challenge, so the Jets are left with a timeout, and Jackson makes a great play with the right foot for one moment, then a dumb play with the right foot a moment later. Yeah, I'm not going to call it dumb. You know, I'm just not. I mean, sometimes you got to look the other way. Think about where this game is, the season, what it stands for, 17-7, to and he really just went over there and barely kicked it. It's not like he picked it up and threw it. Uh, you, you, know, wouldn't, I, you wouldn't have called it. No, not in the emotions of this game. I, I would have let it go. I just think sometimes you got to let certain situations go. Vincent Jackson, who was, a, by the way, a 4.2 student in college. He often said this, but he's one of the few players who almost matched his 40 time with his GPA. <laughs> he's a bright yeah. guy. He's had a yeah. sensational year. Uh, but he's going to have his team set at the 20 at the 35. Still, San Diego, well, you know, is moving with three minutes to go and one time out of the pocket. It's a just, here it is here on the is. right side. Here he goes. Now watch. It's not even like it just... All right. And, you know, Jim, think about the penalties, though, today. Do you agree some of the false starts, delay of games, they put their offense in tough situations, yep. and these personal fouls have been deadly. Well, it's first and 10, not first and 25. First and 10 from the 35. That's Darren Scrolls. And he steps out and gets all that penalty yard attack and gets to the 16-yard line. Damn, 19. So quick, so fast. And Jim Leonard, pretty good coverage. But also Jim Leonard's been battling all year. The hand, and it's tough for him to wrap up tackles when he has a guy in sight like he did with Darren Sproles that time. Just got that right arm out of a cast. From the 16. Kicks off the hit. A second time gets away from Ellis. Rivers able to manage a yard or two. You know, Sean Ellis, that hand wrapped up. He injured it right at the very start of the game. Probably couldn't quite That's get a it. hold of him. You said it. Same thing. Hard to wrap around and make these tackles. How about this? A three-man rush. And Sean Ellis, oh, he goes in there, doesn't even know what to do because really he has one, one hand. 
Antonio Gates, that's a little late. Sean Ellis had already pressured Phillip Rivers to move out of the pocket. 2.45 to go. Rivers able to escape the sack and stop the clock getting out of bounds. Number 14. 13. Second down and seven. And knocked down incomplete. David Harris cutting across and denying. Pass to Gates. You know, sorry, Jim. I'm talking about Jim Leonard. We looked at was Eric Smith that missed the tackle on Darren Sproles. We're going to give you the short pass over the middle. Once again, Antonio Gates doesn't look it in. Again, if San Diego is going to mount this furious rally, it's very likely they're going to have to rely on Keating connecting on a field goal. And it could come after this play, third and seven, if they fail to convert here. Gates was a little banged up on that last play. There he is in a slot on the left. Rivers steps up. It's Jackson slicing in and down at the one. Inside the one. Splitting right between Bart Scott and Dwight Lowry. Rivers says, come on, let's hurry up. Let's get a playoff. Well, that's just right on the edge. Scrolls in the backfield. Rivers sneaks it across for the San Diego touchdown. With 2.14 to play. Well, you look at that series, tremendous job by the San Diego Chargers. Getting it down, scoring fast enough. But look at the Jets. Three people rushing the quarterback. He's able to step up. Everybody's dropping back, trying to stop the big play, but they're letting them catch and run with it now. Phillip Rivers, good call. Go with the quick quarterback sneak. I'm not sure Vincent Jackson wasn't in anyway. 63 yards covered in 82 seconds. And Kading adds the extra point, and it's a 17-14 game. You know, what do you do, really, when they get that last series, when they got down there to the 10 and around it, I thought the Jets would dial up some of their blitzes, but they played it safe. A lot of holes when you play it safe against a team with this many weapons so crucial to score with enough time on the north side of the two minute warning so that if you don't recover the kick here you got the one timeout plus you got the two minute warning that, that, that's exactly right and oh we, we talk about this all the time what they've done here they're going to make the jets keep playing so the jets will have to run a play two minute warning run another one timeout all right nate kading and the Chargers with an onside kick. you got to think on the way. Kading has twice attempted onside kicks. He's two for two, but they're going to go with Cyphers. You, you know, honestly, I thought they would kick it away. But that timeout, the two-minute warning, and make the Jets get a first down to win the game. Cyphers one for four in his career. Attempted these. It's a high in the air. Beauty. Tipped around and it is pulled in by Kerry Rhodes. Well, you couldn't launch it. I mean, that, that is exactly what you try to do. And it, it was right on the 10-yard mark. You are right. Jump it, ball. It is really when that happens, Jim, what is it? It's just man, who, who just gets forced into come down with it? Man, that is like watch all the players. Perfect go execution. Up, and Kerry Rhodes gets the rebound. My gosh, him and Jericho Cotri. Yep, he was battling with Osgood. I, I, I don't know. I would not have onside kicked. I would have made the Jets try to win the game, throwing the football for one play. Rich Ryan saying, wait a minute, one second came off the clock on that onside kick? Well, they're quick jumpers. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Jackson makes up for the, well, he made the great catch. Makes up for the unsportsmanlike penalty by taking it down to the goal line where Rivers comes to the cross, and here come the Jets. They do knock another second off the clock. 2-12. And they go green. For no gain. Well, you know, again, I'm going to go back to it. Now there's no pressure on the Jets. They're going to run it three times and just say, go ahead, see if you can get down there and kick the field goal.
Chargers have a timeout, and you still don't like the uh, onside kick try by the Chargers. No, I don't. I want to go over it one more time if we get a chance after this play. Riding the rookies, Sanchez and Green. Green. Cesare pushes him back, gain of three. Green, the first Jet running back to have 100-yard performances back-to-back -back in the postseason since Freeman McNeil. Timeout Chargers. Well, Jim, let's go back. Would you onside kick? If you kick it off, first off, the Jets are playing for the onside kick. They got to play it safe. If you kick it off, the Jets are backed up. They only have one person back, nobody to block. You're going to get good field position if you're the San Diego Chargers. The Jets are going to run it on first and second down. There's going to be just under two minutes left. And now for the Jets to think they get to win the game, maybe they throw it. Maybe it's incomplete that gives you that opportunity. Now if you stop it, they punt. Even if they don't throw it, you still have a lot of time left and better field position to try to try to field goal. What to me, see? that's what I would have done. What do you see the Jets doing here on third down and six? The, the, the riskiest play I could see him doing here if they let Mark Sanchez boot off of the play action fake. So the guy's wide open, he throws it. If not, he just runs it and falls down. Green, plowing, driving, and stopped short by less than a yard. Wow. Now, what do you do? First down just closes out the game. He's about a half yard short. Well, this is this is this is big too. This saves a few extra seconds for the San Diego Chargers. Oh, well, they stop the play clock at 33. I thought once they stopped it. Once they measured and they restarted, they would take it down to 25 and save an extra eight or nine seconds. Well, you got Rex Ryan, rookie head coach over there, and all these options. You could go for it and just try to close out the game. You, I mean, you're certainly in field goal range, but a miss would set up San Diego in great position. You could pooch punt it. You could go ahead and measure first. Again, it's going to be uh, somewhere around uh, you know, a half yard shy. Woo and what a decision to make. Listen, I coached the high school all-star game in the <laughs> summer. I couldn't make any decisions. I had to ask everybody. It's amazing when you stand there. But I'm looking at this right now. I would go for it. He's going for it. I would go for it. And the Jets, what they're going to do, let the play clock go down, and then Mark Sanchez, looks like he's already out there. They're going to go down to one second and call a timeout. That'll bring the game clock down to about a, a minute and nine seconds, minute ten. Let, let's play it in between. If they punt it, let's say they do a good job, and let's say they get it on the seven-yard line. Just, we're good. So that you're going to gain about 20 yards, let's say. I'd go for it. Try to win the game right here. But Woody Johnson staring it down. Hey, it's a tough spot to be in if you don't make it. This Chargers offense, you know, do you still have, here you go. It's a whole different scenario this time. Do you have the courage to blitz him and say, oh, maybe this would be the one time they'd catch it and break a tackle and get a big play. And the Jets, last time now. And you talk about that offensive line that's been together, played every game over the course of the last two seasons. You had the option there of going with a Thomas Jones. He's been with a team on the way to a Super Bowl. Well, you got a rookie who's run wild here the last couple of weeks, Sean Green. Well, what do you think? You heard my opinion. What's your? I think you got to go for it. I think you just go ahead and try to win the game. Yep. I mean, it's I would, the field goals, you know, which I don't. Too risky to miss. You have it set up basically the 36, 37 yard line. It's can Ron Rivera's defense step up and keep this season alive? They're gonna go Thomas Jones. They're gonna go veteran instead of rookie. Richardson lined up as the fullback. It's going to Jones. Jones has the first down, and the Jets are now on their way to Indianapolis. First down, Jones. Well, that was, you said it right. They took the veteran. They went over the right side. Oh, everybody just goes inside 
and they push the pile. Look at Rex Ryan, Brian Schottenheimer celebrating. And Mark Sanchez, oh man, nice hold to the inside by that Jets offensive line. That's Brandon Moore, Nick Mangold, who has just been tremendous this year at center. But the quick snap count was part of it too. Mark Sanchez with his second playoff win. That's as many as Joe Namath had in his Hall of Fame career. The Jets, he's done what Flacco did last year, win two playoff games as a rookie quarterback, also both on the road. It'll be the Jets and Indianapolis. The team that ended the Colts undefeated season when the Colts decided with five minutes to go in the third. Let's pull the starters. Well, like a lot of people said, the team that led the New York Jets in the playoffs. What profound disappointment there's around here in San Diego after a season of 13-3, and three, a fourth straight division. Hottest team coming into the playoffs, too. And LaDainian Tomlinson, who knows what the future holds for him.